Tonight on Colts Up Close, Jeff Saturday will be inducted into the Ring of Honor. We will show you his reaction to the big news. Plus, breaking down the Colts pass rush with and without Robert Mathis over the past two years as we give you our camp countdown with just two weeks to go until training camp in Anderson. Welcome to Colts Up Close. This is Colts Up Close. Welcome to our Camp Countdown edition of Colts Up Close. I'm your host, Steve Andress, as we preview the defense and the special teams with the start of training camp now just two weeks away up in Anderson, Indiana. But first, we start with the biggest story of the week. Center Jeff Saturday will be inducted into the Ring of Honor this season. A six-time Pro Bowler and two-time first-team All-Pro, Saturday led the O-line to the Super Bowl 41 title. Not bad for a guy that went undrafted out of North Carolina. Saturday's most memorable play, one of his nine fumble recoveries. This one, the 2006 AFC Championship game against the Patriots. As you'd expect, Saturday was thrilled when he heard the news. I tell you, man, I was blown away. I was, uh, I was very honored. Uh, excited, you know. You you uh, when you start playing this game, you never really envision uh, that that occurring in your career. And um, you know, the way I tell people about my career all the time is much better than I deserve. I can't say enough good things. I'm just humbled by it and and really excited. You know, I, I told my wife it was it's crazy, um, but I'm pumped up. I mean, I'm fired up. It's it's a, it's a rare honor that the guys get and I just happen to be one of the lucky ones who gets it and so uh, I'm very honored. So congratulations to Jeff Saturday. We transition now to our camp countdown preview beginning with the Colts defense and how the pass rush looked different in 2014 compared to 2013 when Robert Mathis was on the field. Former Colts quarterback Jim Sorge and Colts.com beat writer Kevin Bowen break down exactly that in the Speedway scouting report on the Sharp Whiteboard. Jim and I look back at the 2014 season, one of the stats that really sticks out to me is the sack numbers. No Robert Mathis in 2014, yet you still had 41 sacks, 42 in 2013, with Mathis obviously in the lineup, and without him, you were only one sack short of that number, but it had to be done in a lot of different ways because 98 wasn't on the field. Well, remember with Mathis, with Robert in the lineup, he accounted for almost 50% right. of those sacks. So they did a good job of, of changing things up and mixing things up and putting pressure on the, on the offensive line to get those sacks without him in 2014. But in two, obviously in 2013, it was a lot easier because he was getting it done. And we're going to show you two plays on how he was getting it done. Right here, the Colts against Kansas City Chiefs are going to run four, rush four guys. But this is the guy right here, Robert Mathis. He's so good. He's so quick off the ball he's so fast he gets to the quarterback so fast he doesn't even give him time to really set up but the problem is he did that fully healthy mm -hmm. now he's going to be coming back for, from a ruptured Achilles tendon he's going to have to push off of that whatever Achilles it was his left Achilles I believe and get past these tight ends get past these uh, tackles and get to the quarterback and will he be able to do that because you're going to see right here as this play develops I mean th this tight end that is such a mismatch. It's not even funny. He has no shot in blocking Robert Mathis. Robert gives him a quick sw uh, swim move. But what's impressive about Robert is the relentless effort to get after the quarterback. I mean, they're going to send an offense alignment out here to chip him, to get him, to, to actually double team him, to keep him off the quarterback, and it's not going to get done. He gets by him, and he's just he's going to be relentless. And he gets to the quarterback, and he's going to cause a strip sack fumble, which is obviously what he's really good at. And this was the game-changing play in that comeback playoff win over the Chiefs. This was his last sack in 2013, the following week against the Patriots. Again, an, 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 just Robert being Robert. I mean, just so quick off the football watch. I mean, I mean, he puts his hand down. I think he actually gets to Tom Brady here within a matter of like two seconds. And we can count, kind of count that down. Right, let me clear that. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and he's so good at it that this left tackle doesn't even have a shot. Right. But what I like about it, he's not going after just the hit. He's going after the ball. He's trying to cause turnovers, get his offense the ball back. Uh, you can see the uh, Patriots are in the red zone here. So he's trying to disrupt their offense and give our offense the ball back. 
I think it's those individual efforts that were missing a bit in 2014. You had to get very creative this this past season, bring guys from different areas, some unique looks from the Colts. And that's exactly what we did right here. I mean, I think we're only going to rush three or uh, four or five guys, but right here we got a defensive tackle lined up outside the left tackle standing up. We got our outside linebacker with his hand on the ground, and it just causes confusion. It causes these guys to have to identify. These five guys are, are looking for the four down linemen and the Mike linebacker to identify. But what we had to do is we kept only one defensive lineman in the game. The rest are linebackers. So good job identifying which guys are going to come. And, and that was the problem uh, that we created on offenses. And then you'll see right here, if I'll rewind it a little bit, this D tackle is going to come in and almost set a pick. And then you're going to run a TE stunt. And then this guy, he's not ready for it. He's going to get locked up by this defensive tackle. And it's going to cause a sack for the Colts. Actually, a really good job by uh, defense coordinator Greg Minuski in creating ways to get to the quarterback. And in that Titans game, that was when Vontae Davis wasn't thrown at all game, so some credit to the secondary as well. Then this play, only one defensive lineman on the field here. One defensive lineman right here, Ricky Jean right here. And then you got DeQuell. Uh, you got Josh McNary. Josh McNary, uh, Eric Walden, and Bjorn Werner. So you, identifying which four of those guys. So what I would have done at offense coordinator is I would identify those four guys as you're down in Mike. So the offensive line should pick him up. But then you got to worry about Sergio Brown right here. And is he uh, the responsibility of the back? Just again, confusion by the offensive line just allows them to get a free rusher. And nobody, this guy should be working this way because obviously there's these three big guys over here and you got this guy probably got to count for this guy. He works opposite and you're going to get nobody blocking to Quell Jackson and he's going to get a big hit on uh, Charlie Whitehurst. And we see a lot of different faces. Seven guys had at least three sacks last year for the Colts. Obviously a far cry from 2013 when Mathis had all the sacks. And then down there, this is the season finale down there in Tennessee. Yeah, and what do you do here? I mean, Charlie Whitehurst is going to bring his back into the backfield, but who's going to come? Again, you've got two defensive linemen in the game. You've got four linebackers. Jonathan Newsom over here. You got Landry lined up right here that can come. You got Mike Adams. Which 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 two of these guys? Which one of these guys is going to cover this back? Which guy is going to come? And it's just the identification process. And I think with Robert coming back and these packages that we put in, I think we'll be a very stout defense. But you know, this is just one you can't let this happen. I mean, you just let an outside linebacker go free. This guy should definitely be working out. But then you don't want a defensive tackle to go free. And this one really hurt Charlie Whitehurst. <laughs> I remember this play. He he was a different quarterback after that hit. And Jonathan Newsom six and a half sacks last year. The closest thing I think to Robert Mathis from a pure individual pass rushing standpoint. One thing to watch, Jim, this year with all these new faces. Trent Cole now into this package as well. You're going to have a lot of NASCAR looks. And our final play here that we look at the Cincinnati game. This is when they they have seven guys in to protect, the Colts still get to Andy Dalton. Yeah, you're going to block with either five, six, or seven guys, and they're blocking right here with seven. They got their five offensive linemen, a running back, and then a tight end right here, and they're going to block seven guys, and they should be able to do it because we only got six guys right here, but obviously we're going to add on here, and it's just a, a matter of identification again because they're talking. They don't know what's going on. You can see it right here. The Running backs asking, who mm -hmm. do I have? Do I check here? Do I search over in this area? It's and then kind of come back. Be you just do, you, you don't know. And Andy Dalton had no answers. Even though they have seven guys in protection, it just wasn't getting the job done. You can see he's fixing things. And it's just he doesn't know where to go. He's confused. And when you confuse a quarterback, he keeps his eyes on the defense coming at him and not so much on the receivers down the field. Mm -hmm. And it just causes for, for mass chaos and havoc. And that's what the Colts did. Greg Minuski, again, is going to have plenty of options this year. Jonathan Newsom in his second year. Trent Cole, hopefully a healthy Robert Mathis. A lot of different looks he can go to on third downs in 2015. Colts linebackers coach Jeff Fitzgerald further illustrated this point in a recent X's and O's segment that you can watch the full episode of on Colts.com. But he breaks down one of those blitzes without Mathis right now. This next play is going to be taking place in one of our third down defenses, sub defense as we call it. That means there's five DBs on the field, two linebackers, and four D line as you see it there. We're going to blitz from what we perceive as the weak side, okay? The weak side blitz is coming. It's going to bring Jarrell Freeman and the safety lined up to that side. You can see them start to creep prior to the snap of the ball. The guys are going to be able to hit that blitz hard and fast and have a chance to get to the quarterback because they've squeezed a little bit of that ground away taking a little grass, as we called it, prior to the movement and the snap of the football. You can see here, as we let the protection go, the protection being the four offensive linemen, okay, working on just two. Well, obviously, that's gonna leave some people free, as you see here. We've got nice, clean shots on the quarterback, and what's happening is exactly what should happen. 
We want the sack always, but we're not going to be satisfied unless we get that ball out as well. Coming up next on Colts Up Close, we talk special teams with long snapper Matt Overton. He shows you just exactly how specific a pro has to do it.